we left the UK, went down to Ushuaia in Argentina, picked up a boat from there called the Australis, went across the uh, Drake Passage towards the peninsula of Antarctica and went to Elephant Island. And the uh, endurance expedition which Shackleton did, um, his boat sank, the endurance sank. And the really, very quickly, the story is that he made his way to Elephant Island, left all his men there. Six of them then went from Elephant Island in the James Caird to South Georgia. And that's exactly what we did. We went to Elephant Island, saw where his men stayed for uh, four months. And then we, again, same boat, went up to South Georgia and we uh, attempted the uh, crossing. And our first attempt, we had some pretty wild weather. So we went down to the South Sandwich Islands, which is really just a tick on the box rather than do anything. It's, it's probably the most remotest place I've ever been to. It's like going to the end of the world. If you went any further, you would have gone off the end of the world. The thing that I was thought, if, if the ship went down, the nearest rescue was days and days away. Uh, so then we went back to South Georgia and the weatherman was absolutely on the button with weather. So we left and did this wonderful, magnificent uh, traverse and um, got all the way down to Shackleton's route down to Fortuna Bay and got picked up again. And then from South Georgia, we sailed back to Stanley because, of course, Shackleton, once he landed on South Georgia, the whaling stations were on the other side, so that's why he had to go across the interior to try and get help. And then he tried four attempts to get down to Elephant Island to eventually pick up his men, which he finally did. And amazingly, in all that time, I think it was 18 months, they never lost a man. What sort of preparation did you guys put in for this? Uh, once we chose, or the army chose the guys, then they were very specific in the training that they did mountaineering courses and sailing courses and they were a credit they were a delight to be with and uh, i'm glad they looked after the old man ollie let's move on to you you have done two tours of afghanistan and on your second you got injured can you tell us about that um i was a section commander in the brf we were doing an operation and during the operation we were clearing for a group of compounds and then um, we were under contact for the entire day um on the extraction, as we were extracting out of the area, um, we came under pretty accurate fire from UGLs under some grenade launchers. The Taliban were really good at um, using them and very effective. And um, as I was kneeling down, as we were peeling back, a UGL landed next to me and fragged all my arm and my leg, all my body armor, um, my pelvic protector. It was all riddled with shrapnel, my rifle was smashed to pieces. After that happened, you were then flown back to the UK, you went through months of recovery. What was that like? Um, my recovery was mainly in up in Catrick, um, with physios in Catrick, but between Birmingham and Catrick, um, it was probably a good 10 months of physio um, on my arm, mainly because it broke two bones in my arm, shattered my elbow joint, and uh, affected the muscle strength. It's still not strong, but it's, uh, it's not bad. What was it like for you retracing the footsteps of a historical legend like Shackleton? You, you don't really appreciate what it would have been like for some like Shackleton and guys and the kit and equipment they had. Um, for us, we had all modern day equipment. So even us on a modern boat with modern equipment, retracing his route, it was rough enough for us. So you really get an appreciation of what hardship everybody went through to even survive, let alone create the massive rescue story. Keith, let's move on to you. You were also injured in Afghanistan. Can you tell us what happened to you? Uh, I was injured in 2010 on my first tour. Uh, I was hit by a grenade and it left me with balance and ear issues. Um, the physical injuries have, have long since healed, but it's left me with a balance issues, which given that we were going to be on a boat <laughs> in the swelling sea, um, and climbing as well, <laughs> you know, I thought, mm, am I the best person to be doing this? But, you know, um, the army have been great helping me with it, still allowing me to serve. And, you know, I think it's something that I'm, I have overcome. What would you say then were the best parts and the worst parts of this trip? The seasickness with the balance issue on the boat and, you know, the Southern Ocean being so rough. I suffered quite badly from seasickness. I got through it, but it was, it was definitely rough. Um, the high point for me would be definitely completing the actual Shackleton Crossing. You know, it's something that you do once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. 
and that to be able to actually do that for me was a massive high. Justin, let's move over to you. You are the co-expedition leader. Why did you guys decide to put this trip on in the first place? When we took the three boys from my old regiment to the South Pole, that sort of ignited a story which we thought was worth continuing. The Shackleton story is iconic, we all know it, and uh, it's the 100th anniversary, so to do something around that uh, was always sort of on our radar. It's very satisfying to do something which is out of your comfort zone and difficult, and see very brave young people like Ollie and Keith really rise to the occasion and showcase that you, know, you can do remarkable things if you put your mind to it. Um, and there are a lot of people who unfortunately have been injured, and it's very humbling from our side, definitely, but it's very inspirational for a whole mass of other people to see what they can achieve. And, and these two, I mean, we really can't understate how they really raised their game and, and stepped up, um, because it, was, it wasn't easy. We had a couple of sort of moments where we all looked at each other and thought, this is interesting. And it kind of just sets the theme for the uh, poignancy of what we were doing. I mean, what Shackleton achieved, and his crew, all of them, uh, is nothing short of astounding. Um, and as Ollie said, you know, we did it with modernity on our side and, you know, weather planning and all. It is absolutely astounding what he did. And to have had the honour to have walked that walk and seen what the human can do and belief and spirit and all that stuff that you do when your life's on the line is remarkable. The military, as we all know, the backbone of preparing people for very difficult situations uh, is second to none. David and I have obviously done quite a lot of this stuff and it, it, from uh, the responsibility that we had to make sure that they uh, came back safely, that was made a lot easier. But I think it's been, we lucked out, it's been a good trip. You know, from beginning to end, um, there's been a lot of humour and all the, you know, lots of banter and it's worked, it's worked very well. This trip obviously wasn't just a jolly, you were also raising money as well. Again, as with all these things, as, as David said, we've raised uh, quite a lot of money on, on some of the trips that we've done. And on this one, we have aligned ourselves with something called the DNRC, which is the Defence National Rehabilitation Centre, which uh, His Royal Highness Prince William is the patron of, and it's the new sort of Headley Court. So Headley Court, obviously, having been sort of formed in the Second World War, it needs to be updated and uh, that's what the DNRC is doing which has been championed by the Duke of Westminster in England and uh, it's a fantastic project which is opening in 2018 so it's been great for us to raise some awareness about what they're doing uh, and hopefully um, it'll help lots of our injured soldiers and also the military. David we'll come back to you do you have a message for the military personnel listening to this? Um, you know the army do some amazing things and um, you know, just go out and follow your dreams. These guys had the chance and they grabbed it and, and did it. And um, to put it in perspective, myself and Justin, we've done Everest, North Pole and South Pole together now. But for me, the Shackleton Traverse was probably the best, one of the best trips I've ever done. Um, and actually more people have climbed Everest than have done that Shackleton Traverse. So it's a major, major undertaking and I'm very proud of the, the guys of how they um, upped their game and, and did it. I'm very proud of our, our, our military. 